How are you? Good. Why is there cool jazz playing? Miles Davis eh, just playing something during the downtime. Hmm. I like it. Good morning. Morning. Trying to not thank you for your time again. So that's just a pleasantry that I'm afforded. <laughs> Hope you're well. I am. Thank you for asking. Good that slurp. I'll accept. Good slurp sound. Yeah. Mike, I have an ethical dilemma that I want to ask you about. Great. Yeah. On air? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because maybe other people find themselves in the same situation. So you're Are you wearing an a cold ethicist. Hat? Am I wearing a what now? A cold hat? I am wearing a cold hat, yeah. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. T.Y. Hilton went to FIU. Yeah, pause up. <laughs> <laughs> you have your running of, of the 2000s? I, I just, I can't <laughs> believe that, that information flew out of my <laughs> why head. Why didn't you know that? Why wouldn't you, yeah. why wouldn't you be fluent in Billy? It was a nice, it was a nice little run they had there because he got drafted the same year as Luck, so I adopted the Colts for a little <laughs> bit, and uh, you know I was, I was very sad when Andrew Luck. I'll never forget where I was when Andrew Luck announced that he was retiring. And where was were you? Booed off the field. I was in my apartment. I had my family over, and we were watching a game. It was a preseason game, obviously. Um, we were doing something. I don't remember what it was, but we had everybody over for some reason. I think it was like a pool day at the apartment, and I was shocked to hear the news. Very saddened by it. And I'm also sad that T.Y. Hilton's not on a team right now, you know? Anyway. When you say, I'll never forget where I was when something happened, and the answer is you were in your apartment, it yeah. kind of takes a little bit of the... Well, where should I have been? <laughs> I'll I, never just, it just, I was accurate. I didn't forget where I was. That's you got to be was. out somewhere. It's just disappointing. Yeah. The answer for you is disappointing. Right. Time. Just usually like it's like I'm on a plane, you know, or like I'm I was taking a walk. I was just standing on a cliff overlooking the ocean or something, but... Yeah. I mean, mo you're in the apartment most of the time. So when you say, I remember where I was, and then. The okay, storyteller, man. Not everyone's yeah. stories can be as good here, as sorry, yours. God. We're going to uh, do stat of the day. No need for you to come in here and tell everybody how to do their jobs. Know how you. to remember things. <laughs> I mean, I'm with Mike on this. Let's do you. stat Thank of the you. day, please. <laughs> start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. It is presented by Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. Folks, yesterday we congratulated the Seattle Mariners who ended a long playoff drought. And now we say congratulations to the Philadelphia Phillies who did the same thing last night thanks to two more homers from probable NL home run champ Kyle Schwarber. <laughs> Courtesy of Schwarbs. Optistats on Twitter, which used to be Stats by Stats. They changed their name. I don't know why. Courtesy of Optistats. Because the MLB regular season got extended a little bit into October this year, Kyle Schwarber last night became only the second player in MLB history to have two multi-homer games in October in the regular season. And the only reason this is a good stat to me is because the other one played for the St. Louis Browns in 1889 and his name was Jocko Milligan. <laughs> I'm just going to go older and older with these baseball stats until you fire me. Here's the other thing. There's also a bonus stat of the day, courtesy of Hollywood masshole Kevin Hench on my tech Boston sports text thread, who pointed out that more than 400,000 people went to Yankee Stadium over the last couple days to see Judge hit home runs number 61 or 62, and every single one of them went home sad. <laughs> now that's a stat. Uh, Billy, you think that the, the country is turning on Aaron Judge? Yeah, no, he needs to do it already. Uh, people are getting tired of this. And at this point, I think, and, and Mike, maybe you're like me, I'm hoping he doesn't do it, right? You don't want him oh, to hit 62. Of course, I've, I've always been hoping he doesn't do it. But I think not only are people turning on him, I think... <laughs> that uh, I'm now on Jessica's side on this. I know she's not here today, oh, but no. I've come all the way around. Now I'm now I've like 
Wake Forest Clemson football, it does there is sanctity there. You should not cut into Wake Forest <laughs> Clemson football to show Aaron Judge because I'm so bored of it by now. You know what I'm just realizing? So if he doesn't do it, right? Then, like, let's say next year, two years from now, whatever it is, the next person or the next Yankee or American League person or whatever will have Roger Maris's son and Aaron Judge's mom following them around <laughs> for weeks on end. <laughs> they should all should all be Yankees getting stuck on 61 so that the entourage of, like, family members has just gets bigger and bigger. It's like, oh, here's DJ LeMayhew's cousin in the audience to see if, if someone's going to hit 62. Does the podcast ramp up during the playoffs? Does the podcast is it some place that people need to be for actual baseball stuff? Because you and Poznanski need to be talking somewhere about all the insanities you're watching in baseball. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a playoff preview in which we basically say who knows a hundred times. Uh, that'll be fun. I think we're doing that today. Actually, be up probably later this week. Um, we do a we do a a we do three big things on the podcast. One of them is coming up, which is the holiday draft. Sometimes on the show we do a draft where we each draft five things. They're stupid. It doesn't. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason what we draft like cereals or we draft Fruits, yes uh-huh. numbers numbers between one and ten or whatever. But we invite everyone who basically who's ever been a guest on the show into one giant mega draft, and we pick a holiday theme, and we do it at the beginning of December. That's always really fun. It's uh, uh, it's enormous and sprawling and absurd. And we got into a an enormous argument with with Brandon McCarthy one year and Alan Sepinwall, who's a TV critic, for what they drafted, and we screamed at them for like two hours. It was great. So we do that, and then in and it's in also April, it's also your famous friends too, uh, is it not? It's yeah, the people that you like yeah, hanging so, around with. There's some Nick Offerman sneaks in there somehow every year, and uh, there's a lot of fun, interesting folks, baseball writers, critics, um, uh, random people we met on the street, anybody who wants to join in joins in. And then we do a baseball preview episode in April, and then we do a playoff preview in October. So coming up will be our playoff preview, and then in December we'll do the uh, holiday draft. We will find a place for you and Billy, Colts fan, T.Y. Hilton fan, to do a watch party during the playoffs so that people can get more of an appreciation for how much you love this sport. But can you explain Schwarber to me? Because I Schwarber, I've always thought of him, keg softball player, cartoonishly funny, uh, probably has DNA from the Giambis somewhere in his uh, in his bloodstream. But I haven't thought of him as a serious person who's going to hit more home runs than everyone else. Oh, he's always had this in him. I mean, he had uh, he he hit. Let me see. He hit 16 home runs in his first 70 games as a 22 year old rookie. He's been hurt a lot. He hasn't. He's rarely played a full season. Um, but he's always had this power in him, uh, and it's just this year. I think he's been healthy. He's played 155 games, so he's been healthy the whole year. He he missed most of the year and then came up to Boston and hit. You know, he didn't hit a ton of home runs for Boston, but he played really well for Boston in the last 40 games of the season last year on their playoff run. He had a he hit had a 957 OPS. Like this is the guy he is. It's just that there's no he's a designated hitter. There's no place for him in the field. The Red Sox let him go. It's kind of stupidly. They they could have really used 46 home runs in their lineup this year. Um, but he's always had this hitting ability. He can't. This is he kicks off all players right. He hits home runs or he does not hit the ball. That's a, he has 200 strikeouts this year. He's going to lead the league in strikeouts. So. Um, this is who he is, and I. It's really fun to watch him play. He's a great hitter. He's a truly great hitter. He has more power from the left side than almost anybody. Stugatz, why were you and Whittingham laughing? We are uh, currently putting together lists, whether you want them or not, of running backs from the two thousands that make us smile, and so that's <laughs> okay. Very good. We will, Mike's uh, in okay, now. Okay, <laughs> we will get to that in a second. But Billy, you had an ethical dilemma that you wanted to present to Mike Sure. Yeah, I had a situation yesterday, and it's kind of a spin on a classic that we've discussed multiple times, and it involves a shopping cart. So we've had the conversation of when you go grocery shopping, you have the shopping cart. What do you do? Do you take it back? Do you leave it in the parking lot? Do you put it in the corral, et cetera, right? So mm-hmm. yesterday, for the first time ever, because I'm someone that will go and just do a light jog and take it back into the grocery store. Yesterday, for the first time ever that I can remember, I had that situation, but I had someone waiting to take my spot. So I loaded my car, but I had another car Mm. waiting to take my spot. And I thought, well, do I walk this back and make this person wait? Do I leave this shopping cart here in the parking lot to uh, kind of appease the person that's waiting? Because now I have two people 
that I could potentially let down. And that's really what my stresses in life are, is not letting people down. And these are all strangers, right? But I have two strangers that I could let down. I could let down the person who has to walk around and get the shopping cart or the person who's waiting in their car to get the shopping cart. So what would you do in that scenario? And then I'll tell you what I did. This is a great question. I love this question because <laughs> you're talking about when you're returning the shopping cart, you're talking about one part of the calculation is making it a little more convenient for people when they show up because there's shopping carts waiting for them at the door as they're walking in. Mm -hmm. But now you're talking about by doing that, you're making it way more inconvenient for the person who's trying to park and trying to park at a grocery store, depending on what grocery store it is, can be the most annoying part of that experience, right? Mm -hmm. So I have two questions for you. Number one, was it was it a packed uh, parking lot where there were all the spaces taken pretty much it wasn't that packed i went early it was like a 4 30 ish so you beat like the afternoon rush crowd of people getting out of work so there were other spaces available but this person was very clearly waiting for mine because i had a decent spot it wasn't like top three but it was maybe like fourth down in the row and it was a good row i would say i think what i would have done is i would have signaled to the person and uh, and then pulled out and then basically said like, hey, take my cart. Like here's, it's mm -hmm. like you're, you're providing a full service experience now of like park in my spot and then I, I'll have a cart. You're like, a, you become a grocery store concierge at that point. Yeah. The you're thing, giving the person a space and the cart. The thing though is that COVID's kind of thrown all of this off, right? Because yeah. now when you take the carts in, they wipe them down. So even sometimes when I go and I take it back into the store, I now know that I've put a contaminated cart back into circulation that hasn't been wiped down. <laughs> You know, so yeah. like things are getting dicey here. And this wasn't like an, I don't know if you have Aldi's out there. Do you know what Aldi is? No. Aldi's a grocery store that's kind of revolutionized the game where you need to put a quarter that's into sucks. the cart because it's chained to all the other carts, right? So then you're incentivized to take the cart back if you want to get your quarter back because you have to then go and put the chain in the back and that's what releases the quarter. Yeah, so Aldi, stupid. they've also changed the game in that they don't bag your groceries. So like if you want the convenience of doing, yeah, they, they pretty much don't do anything. So you have to go and take <laughs> your own bags and you have to bag them yourself. Like they'll scan it and they'll just put it right back in your cart. So anyways, we're not talking about Aldi. We'll do that tomorrow or another day. So what I ended up doing, which I felt was the wrong decision, I jogged it back to the into the store and the person was really mad at me. Like I, I sent them kind of like speed off and like I, I didn't want to look at them because I sensed the judgment that was coming my way for taking it back in. So I feel like I erred and I made the wrong decision. I don't know. Look, people's reactions to things you do shouldn't be the always the entire basis for judging whether or not you did the right thing. Because people, <laughs> if if there were a bunch of other spots right near you, then don't don't get so angry, man. Just I, drive I often thrive off negative feet. reactions. He is the author of How to Be Perfect: The Correct Answer to Every Moral Question. It is a New York Times bestseller. I want to add to this segment, not fire you. I now want the audience in a segment we're calling hashtag I'm He's sorry. Sure. He's sure to bring us your moral dilemmas so that he could be our national. Uh, uh, I don't, don't have any. We're, we're missing one of these. You know, Mike, sure, you know, nationally, we need somebody who can just help us with ethics. I think you're you're perfectly qualified to do this. So I believe you're uh, – congratulations on the promotion. Uh, the podcast is more work for him during the playoffs. You can find that with Joe Posnanski. And thank you. How to Be Perfect is the name of the book, the correct answer to every moral question. He's sure. Hashtag he's S-C-H-U-R. Uh, send us your morals questions. Thank you, sir. This somehow backfired so badly on me. <laughs> how did this? How does this keep backfiring? Uh, Mike so, Ryan is so ready. Poorly. Mike Ryan is ready. Stugatz is ready. We've got top five running backs. I think from Winnie might also have one. Top five. It sounds like we're doing Tony, a watch party. Tony also, also has has one. One. yes, yeah. Mike, are you doing one of those? Yeah, top four hour game. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Sun's not even up over there yet. At Please. least, at the very least, I get to stick around and hear the top five running backs that make people smile. All right, yes. Tony, of the two thousands. Yeah. Okay. Tony's got a list too, <laughs> so we're gonna rapid fire number. I mean, Five. How many lists do we have? We've got at least like four. four. Hold on. Okay. When you wow. say of the 2000s, does it end in 2009? Or is 2010 no. to 2020 the mid included? 2000s you know to present you day. You know yeah. when you see it. Okay, good. Oh, you're going present day. 2000s to present day. No one's going to have present huh. day, right? All right. I, don't know. Hashtag, I went 2000, 2009. Hashtag he's sure, S-C-H-U-R.
All right, so let's start with Tony and work our way to Stu. Okay. All right, number five, Tony. Rudy Johnson. Oh, wow. <laughs> Willie Parker. Wow. Fast. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh, the law oh, firm. Yeah. <laughs> Beanie Wells. Oh, man, that was a good one. All right, number four, Tony. I'm on Green. Ooh. Ontario Smith. Oh, wow. Wizardator. <laughs> Mike Tolbert. Oh. <laughs> Tolbert. Tolbert. No, but you were always, Tolbert, I would always call Tolbert. 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 Tomato, tomato. You made, you made the, him French. The Tolbert yeah. Rapport. That was one of his nicknames. Was it? Yeah, the Tolbert Rapport. Was it really? Yeah, it's Mike Tolbert. The made Tolbert Rapport. You made that up on the fly, didn't no, you? No, no, no. Really? Yeah, the Tolbert Rapport. Cowboy Rapport. Proud of you. Yeah. All right. Uh, Joseph Adai. Oh. Excellent. <laughs> Number three, Steven Jackson. Oh. Wow. Too good. Number three, Olandis Gary. Oh! Oh, good one. Olandis. Number three, Jay Ajayi. Excellent. I had Gary there. I have to uh, call an audible. I go Corral Buckhalter. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Number two, Tony. Deuce McAllister. I'm pretty sure Mike Schur is checking email. Yeah. <laughs> Ron Dane. <laughs> you have lost him with all of Thunder. your names. He doesn't care about anything you're doing right now. Joyke Bell. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll get his attention back in a second. Ruben Drones. Wow. Oh, I got to find a new number one, man. Oh, that was your one? No. <laughs> another list ruined? All right, I got another I got another number one. Tony, what do you mean you got a number yeah, got, number one? I got these. Tony, you're number one. LaRon McLean. Wow. The inspiration for the list, Dominic Rhodes. <laughs> Eddie Lacy. Wow. <laughs> TJ Duckett. It's <laughs> a good one. It's a good one. Mike Schur, before you get out of here, name all the baseball managers who have won a title since 1997. Uh, we did a segment earlier in the show uh, where we were very self-aggrandizing about how we changed radio in South Florida and then did a segment where we just tried to remember the names of managers. So can you do it? From 97 on, do you think you can name all of them? Champ sure. You think you can do all of them? Wow. Mm -hmm. Can you do it as the call map? Uh, yeah, sure. The what? All right, I think he could do this from memory. I think he could do 97 to right now without missing anybody. Hmm. Ready? Yes. Yep. Deuce Staley. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> I forgot about him. I thought just Deuce McAllister. Oh, well, I. Yeah. Is it, I think he's the Eagles running backs coach now. Oh. Ooh, wow. Well, All right. Uh, prep for live? Omnicron is on the run, and away it went. But oops, there goes gravity, and here comes a new variant. Omaha, Corona, Hut 1, Hut 2, nothing infects the Super Bowl, and nothing stops football.